When the previous eruptions in the May and June uh, started in the Reckoness Peninsula of Iceland, we had a 15 centimeter, 150 millimeter of the uplift of the land due to the magma accumulation under the Storzengi volcanic system. That is what we saw, and then bang, we had an eruption. So the land uplift by 15 uh, centimeter was enough to create eruption. At the moment, we have passed that threshold for this uh, current situation. 20 centimeter, 200 millimeters of the land uplift, magma accumulated and is rising the ground. But yet we don't have any eruption. This is what we see, the image for today. It is what we see. There is no eruption. This is the same camera, same angle of view. Center of the view is where we had the eruption. Nothing happening now. Why? The question is why we don't have that eruption. Okay. As a geologist, I have to tell you this. Uh, for moving of the magma, you need to shake it. The reason is that magma at this stage is not solid yet in the ground. It is actually semi-fluid. It's what we call as a non-Newtonian fluid. It, it, it is somehow like a catch-up. You need shaking and movement to create this flow of the lava. And when that shaking happens, the magma flows and can fill up the pathway. At the moment, we look at the thermal chart for the May and the June eruptions. We see that we had lots of earthquakes. I marked them. These are to the left side of the image. And in the current situation, we have this amount of the earthquakes. The shaking obviously is not enough. As you can see here, clearly there is not enough shaking to make the magma fluid to flow is a non-Newtonian fluid and the shaking as you can see here on the uh, animation of the tremors doesn't exist. This is also 3D model of this uh, uh, earthquakes. You can see that under the Sorsengi, under the Blue Lagoon and under the Grindavik, we don't have enough earthquakes to actually create this uh, flow of the magma at the depth of the seven, eight, five kilometers. Uh, in the past, we had gradual movement of the fissures toward the Grindavik. The latest case was that we had a crack north of the Grindavik in the Hagerfell. And there is a possibility that this crack actually, and the similar cracks, can go and actually extend toward the Grindavik inside the town. We have a risk assessment. The risk assessment is that look at each hazard and we assess the likelihood of that hazard uh, happen, the potential, the probability of it. And when we weigh them against each other by those crosses that you saw, we can come to, to a conclusion is that uh, risk scale on the risk scale is likely or a few or considerable or great or very much likely. Based on that is that we say the, there is a high risk, high probability of the uh, eruption uh, within the Grindavik. However, because the amount of the earthquakes, as I've shown on the chart, is not enough, it, there is a possibility that it will not be eruption like the fountain that we showed you. It may be just a flow of the magma. And the flow of the magma is dangerous because we cannot predict where it comes out and it can leak. It's just like a leak. Until we find it, it will be difficult to actually locate where it is happening. And this is what practically the latest uh, in, uh, Icelandic meteorological office is saying in its update. Uh, you have to be a geologist to understand and analyze this. Uh, otherwise, just be a, a copy and paste. You know, a robot can do that also for you without anything. But uh, to understand what these charts means, the movement, the importance of the earthquakes, and the importance of the magma as a non-Newtonian fluid, uh, how to understand it, and the consequences of that for the likelihood of eruption, and if it can erupt or it can just flow like a leak, uh, this is what you need a geologist to tell it, you know, to an analyze it for you. A robot cannot do that practically.